World Record Holder Czech, World Champion Czech, Africa Title Holder Czech, AAF Continental Cup Gold Medalist Czech, twice Samsung Diamond League winner Czech. In two resounding seasons, David Lekuta Rudisha, the stocky built 800 meters running phenomenon, has marked down imposing achievements listed above in his CV, and this year he's dead set to add the biggest prize of them all the Olympics gold. Training was really good, and that really helped me uh, to move into 2011. And uh, it was not that bad because uh, I achieved uh, my goals. Uh, run a good race, win the World Championships, which was my main target that year. Run a fantastic race, 141. I was not that very strong at the end because uh, I missed part of my training when I was in Jeddah. The media crew spent two days interacting with the two-lap standard bearer as he went for slight training at the Chepko LL campus dirt track and a day later followed him through a light run in the dusty winding roads around E10, the self-styled University of Champions. A dinner and interview opportunities at the Sene Kerio Valley Hotel and St. Patrick's High School E10 camp where he crafts his seasons away from the trappings of luxury that his success has afforded him left the journalist in awe. Here was a man who commands international acclaim and arguably Kenya's most recognizable latter-day sports icon at his humble settings that in following with the tradition set by accomplished runners in his nation chooses to reside for maximum focus. His manager James Templeton and coach Patrician brother Colm O'Connell were there to guide their biggest star through the motions as he narrated his aspirations for a year where he hopes to end as Kenya's fourth Olympics champion following Paul Ereng in 1998, William Tanui in 1992 and title holder Wilfred Bungay who has all but hung his spikes. I was really happy uh, winning the world championships because uh, uh, I missed in Berlin after uh, uh, bad weather and uh, people will start saying that Rudisha is not a championship athlete uh, he's just a fast runner he's a fast athlete but he can manage championship pressure I knew myself that I can do uh, both I can do well in championships as well as uh, do fast races in the uh, uh, in these other uh, uh, leagues uh, circuit so that is what I wanted to prove to them uh, and I thank God that everything went as I planned in Daegu. Uh, I was really happy because uh, I even told my coach that after winning, I felt like uh, uh, something heavy was, you know, laid uh, down from my shoulders, it was taken off. It's because uh, that was a very, uh, you know, it was a very great uh, moment for me and uh, you know to to stop uh, many questions that i was being asked the other year about uh, bali Having broken all barriers in 2010 when he broke the long-standing 1 minute 41 seconds point one one world record set by hero and Kenyan-born Dane Wilson Kipketer twice inside a week, 1 minute 41.09 in Berlin and 1 minute 41.01 in Rieti to be named IAAF World Male Athlete of the Year, all eyes were on the Altanki village-born Tansmara Rana in the subsequent Worlds campaign. After his customary start to the season in Australia, a nagging Achilles tendon injury saw the world record holder delay his entry to the Diamond League. His first Diamond League showing was in Louisiana where he clocked a modest 1 minute 44.15. Rudisha was dominant at the trials for Berlin where he won in 1 minute 43.76 on July 16th before shaping his Diamond League charge with further victories in Monaco with a time of 1 minute 42.61 on July 22nd and London with a time of 1 minute 42.91 on August the 5th that presided his golden run in Daegu. Instantly, he became a celebrity in Daegu, his performance ranking as one of those that received a roaring approval from the crowd at Sebastian Coe and Cuban legend Alberto Juan Torena at a luncheon organized by AIPS. That done, Rudisha returned to Rieti for another world record attempt, but clearly, some of the energy that had marked his 2010 campaign was missing, although he delivered the fourth fastest 800-meter race when the clock stopped at 1 minute 43.31. I was really impressed. In fact, even myself, I didn't know that I can go that far because uh, the way I felt my shape uh, 
uh, last year was not uh, the way I felt uh, the other year because uh, I miss a lot of my training you know after coming from Australia uh, I just had uh, that injury that took me I, around three months two months two and a half three months out of training and then starting coming in slowly again and the season was already on so I miss some of the races uh, in the beginning of the season like Doha Rome and uh, Ostrova that I was planning to to compete there as a plan of build up uh, of my season but uh, I think you know coming out of that injury and running a 141 was something fantastic. Rudisha's season ended in anticlimax when he was handed his first defeat in two years by Ethiopia's teenager Mohamed Aman, who clocked a time of 1 minute 43.5 seconds in Milan on September 18th, and the champion's unbeaten mark of 26 races was broken again in foul weather. I started the season very well, and of course I achieved my level, I achieved my goals. And uh, after that, you know, of course, sometimes you might have relaxed in one day or, you know, somebody is, uh, maybe Haman, he was speaking at, toward the end of the season. But for us, we were like, uh, you know, stably, stabilizing there and uh, maybe going down a little bit. But uh, of course, uh, I was uh, focused and uh, I was going there even to, to try to run another fast race. And I was uh, really in good shape. But uh, it's just come something small. Uh, it's always happened, you know. Uh, it was just a bad day, and uh, it can happen to any athlete, you know. When we go there to the track, yeah, we are good uh, and uh, we are strong. Uh, people expect us to win, but sometimes there's always disappointment. But uh, those disappointments are also good uh, to keep your mind sharp. To know that uh, you have to go back uh, to work, work hard and uh, do better because there's some other guys who will be pushing you behind there. On his much touted Olympics winning performance later this year in London, Rudisha, who once again kick started his season in the land down under with 45.82 results for second over 400 meters at the Sydney Track Classic, disclosed that he was looking forward to deliver the goods. Uh, we are really doing a good preparation at the moment and uh, the progress is really good, uh, together with my coach, uh, Brother Colm. Uh, we are really working hard together to see that uh, we achieve this, uh, this uh, great uh, achievement of uh, winning a uh, gold medal in the Olympic. I know it's not easy, yeah, of course, uh, uh, because it's a tactic race, as well as uh, if somebody has to go there strong, uh, fresh, and uh, of course, uh, to be in the top of the of his shape. Uh, we are working hard and uh, we hope uh, things will go well uh, because uh, the way to training is going at the moment uh, uh, we are on the right track and I hope uh, things are going to be to be fine because uh, we try to do something different this year uh, you know 2010 was a different year from 2011 uh, 20, 2010 we did a training of uh, breaking the world record running fast races but when we came to 2011 we were trying to do a tactical race of winning the world championships so this year we are trying to bring them together to combine to see uh, what result we'll get from there so running fast as well as running well in championships like every other proven soldier, Rudisha does possess a chink in his armor with a bad weather seemingly the only opponent he's yet to conquer with his semi-final exit at the Berlin Worlds and his defeat in Milan the most glaring examples. Conditions likely at the London Olympics, Rudisha admits he has to be prepared to beat foul conditions if he's to be sure of fulfilling his ambitions. In some of the races that have been beaten so far, is why we have uh, bad weather like raining and uh, wet uh, and uh, I think the weather is not a big problem because always it affects everybody but the problem is, uh, my main problem is, is if it affects my warm-up that is the big uh, issue because when I don't do good warm-up and uh, I go to the race then uh, I felt a just a little bit uh, not reactive in the, at the end in Milan, yeah, of course, there was some delays, a little bit, or a little bit, they delay our race a little bit because there was heavy pouring of rain. 
and of course uh, I did only like five minutes of uh, warm up and then after that ready, the rain was pouring heavily so we went into the house we went into a small room like uh, like 10 meters so we were just doing some little stride there so I didn't get my routine of, tr of doing warm up but of course, you know, like Olympic, uh, when we are going there, we are going to prepare because we are going also to prepare ourselves to see that, uh, uh, to prepare ourselves to see that uh, we also carry uh, warm, warm clothing of, uh, you know, if and if it rain, I can go out there and do my good warm up without any problem. Any chance of another world record attempt to crown his season if his London dream is realized? Yeah, you never know because uh, the training so far is good and uh, as I've said we are trying to combine both together this year. So um, any time when we start the season that is when I really know uh, how my shape is and uh, from there is when I can really decide whether I can run fast at the same time go for the Olympic. To keep him abreast with what is going on in his beloved sport as well as other world events, the tech Savi Rudisha has his iPad and Samsung Galaxy Tab presented to him in Daegu when he struck gold to scroll through in his modest camp in Iten with an iPod to listen to his favorite tunes when doing his light workouts.